Hello, and welcome to the Woodshed Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Brent, and today I'm joined by three other lovely fellows, Andy Brent, and Andy Brent, and Andy Brent. And before you click off this video, it's going to be, uh, let me, let me, let me lay out what we're going to do here. Um, all me and my comrades here. Yeah, give a hand, give a hand for all of them. Woo! Ooh. Yeah! So, as you have noticed, um, this is going to be a slightly different podcast than usual, um, considering I'm all alone at my desk with no other uh, people to talk about. And we will be discussing something that's not as jazzy as usual. Um, today, I want to discuss some music that I feel does not get enough attention and I feel it's music that a lot of my listeners, my um, all four of them, would very much enjoy. So, if you are interested in getting into new music, especially music that is... Um, let me see, I made a Google Doc of my interests. Um, I mean, if you're interested in the jazz, you know, always it's always helpful for this type of music. But... Um, If you have an interest in avant-garde music, uh, jazz or otherwise, experimental, progressive music, post-hardcore, math rock, indie rock, uh, Middle Eastern influence stuff, that's around where I live in my musical world, more complicated music, definitely more complicated music. Um, I, I feel like this episode will showcase a lot of good music that you should definitely check out. So the rest of this video will include me talking about some of my favorite bands or just artists that I think are really great. I highly recommend listening with headphones as um, I'll be playing bits of the music, not full songs, but... um, definitely wear headphones. It'll be very helpful and it'll be a more pleasurable experience. On the video side of things, the visual, uh, you can choose whether to watch it or not. I think it'll enhance the experience somewhat, but it's mostly me experimenting with just different things I can do in my video editor, but it's not required by any means. And if you guys don't like this format or a new series I'm making at all, Just let me know in the comments or message me and tell me to make better comment or to just quit entirely. Maybe I should just stop. Um, It'd be very helpful to get some feedback. Yep, so here we go. So the first band I want to talk about is Mealy. Now, some of you might be thinking, Andy, I'm not a fucking weeb. I'm not going to listen to some anime shit. Well, this isn't anime shit, you close-minded fuck. This is quality music. It's actually... Mealy is probably one of my favorite composers that I've ever found, and their vocalist is among the best. Mealy is a very diverse band in many ways. Their genres range from electronic classical, post-classical, various fusions. Their themes in their music relate to a lot of dark themes such as sacrifice, body horror, death. But there are also a lot of fantasy themes like magic, science, robots, androids and for some reason a lot to do with food. And if it hasn't been made apparent already, this is a very strange combination of subjects. Well, Millie is a very strange band. Um, Their vocals could be described as demented, is probably the best way I would describe it. Um, There's a lot of overdubbing in their music, so a lot of the time you'll have two characters arguing with each other. are also in 
several different languages. So you may hear one track in English, another in Chinese, another in Japanese, or, as they're known for doing, making up their own language, which was in the first song I showed you guys, which was Gertruda, a blend of Ukrainian and Latin. Mili was focused on the video game Demo, which is basically, to sum it up, as Guitar Hero but for piano. They also have a lot of instrumental songs, primarily focusing on keys. Now, the reason I like Mili is because it's an interesting fusion you don't typically hear, and the lyrics are very interesting. You don't... you'll hear words you've never heard before, such as rotocrocyte. I'm sure you've never heard of that, maybe in your life, and definitely not in a song, unless you're taking a geology course and had to make a high school video showcasing rotocrocyte. Their vocalist, Momo Cashew, is also one of the most expressive vocalists I've ever heard, and that's not an exaggeration. She is an amazing singer. Now with this band, you will have to get past the anime-ish voice, but it usually doesn't get in the way that much because the rest of the music doesn't sound like a Naruto opening. However, the live videos, um, at least the ones I've seen, the live performances are extremely disappointing. Because, because she overdubs, she'll still have the overdubbing in the background, and for some reason she had the same uh, part she was singing, and she came in flat even though the recording was there, and it was very painful to listen to, so that's very unfortunate, but out of all of these bands, this is probably my favorite, um, probably in my top three bands I've ever heard, so definitely check them out. Going in a completely different direction, Hail the Sun is what got me into progressive metal, progressive rock, and post-hardcore. And I understand it would turn a lot of you off. It certainly did for me. Um, all of the screaming that I didn't really see as music until I listened to this band. But this band is one of the most musical bands of this genre I've heard. The Everything from the guitar to the bass to the drums to the vocals, the technical ability of these musicians is extreme, especially considering the drums and the vocalist are one in the same. They are one person performing them. Hail the Sun has a lot of diverse time signatures, math rocky stuff, and it's very active in all areas of its instrumentation. One of the reasons I highly recommended headphones for this podcast is because their guitar playing in each ear is very different. And it took me a several listens of a single song to figure out like what each guitar was doing because they are so different, but they blend extremely well. Now, their, their lyrics are very dark. Um, they talk about a lot of real-world issues, uh, such as cop killings, murders that have been covered up, which, I mean, I'm all fine with. The only thing that kind of bothers me personally is they have a lot of nihilistic lyrics, and that's something that doesn't really flow well with me, so watch out for that. But I definitely recommend them. The next band I want to talk about is probably the least known band um, that I'll be showcasing. It's a group called Floral. Now, Floral is as pure math rock as you can get. Very high artsy guitar playing and drum playing. I'm not sure if there's a bassist. Um, there's so little information on them. All I know is that 
They play a lot in California. I don't know if they are from California. Their group says there's only a guitar and drums, but either way, this is some of the greatest stuff I've ever heard in the math rock genre, especially their first album, which is by the same name, Floral. Um, I would definitely check them out, especially if you're kind of new to the math rock genre. It kind of shows you what it should be, in my opinion, and what I expect to hear, and just not really what I've been getting from all the bands I've looked at so far. There are no vocals, this is all very instrumental playing, but it's beautiful, and if you love odd time signatures, you're gonna get a shit ton in here. I believe uh, the song I just played was in 27, uh, 16 or 27, 8, whatever you want. Uh, divided six seven six eight if I remember correctly um, Yeah, if, if that if that excited you at all definitely check them out And of course my main man, Tigran Hamasian, I may have mispronounced that, I'm sorry, my lord, but one of the greatest players I have ever heard in my life, probably ranking in at number two in my favorite musicians, of course, number one going to Don Ellis. Tigran Hamasian is an Armenian pianist who originally was interested in thrash metal, fun fact, um, but now makes a lot of classical and jazz that is mixed with Middle Eastern influences and that's across the whole region. You're not really going to get any normal stuff from him. He plays almost everything with a Middle Eastern twist. A lot of uh, classically influenced stuff as well that is beautiful to listen to. He will be occasionally accompanied by a vocalist who, forgive me for the mispronunciation, uh, Arini, who is, is godlike in her vocals. And you don't really have to understand the language to appreciate the music and for as far as I can tell not a lot of the lyrics are actual words they're more just syllables and Tigran himself sings and his voice is beautiful absolutely gorgeous dark and rich and not only does he sing but he also scats or beatboxes or uses Indian vocal percussion however you want to say it I'm not sure of the exact technique but a lot of Takadimi sort of stuff that is absolutely incredible. If you're going to check out Tigran, definitely check out the links I put in as well as the album Red Hail. I usually don't listen to albums, I'm more of a song by song guy, but Red Hail is just a masterpiece on every single track. If you love Don Ellis or anything like it, or you're into Middle Eastern music, Tigran is gonna be the best that you can possibly find. I have not found anyone that gets me as excited as him. All right, so that's going to do it for this gushing podcast. Um, Please let me know in the comments or message me or whatever you want if you'd like to see this series continue um, and what I should do if you want to see something else. Um, I'm mostly doing this to experiment with visuals as well as to just talk about some of the music I think is not talked about enough. And I'd really appreciate some feedback. Remember to leave a like and subscribe and just because that'll really help me out and knowing what I should and should not do. And remember, if you ever have any interest in joining the podcast, helping with stuff such as editing, definitely video or, um, excuse me, audio editing, I really need help with. 
Um, if you want to be a guest, just either message me or join the Facebook group, The Woodshed. It's different from the page, which is The Woodshed Podcast. I'm just, yeah, I'd love to keep this thing going. And I'll catch you guys later.